What's up guys, welcome to Do Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Bullmore 15 Golden and Elegant. Stick around. So we're looking at Bullmore today, but not one of the famous ones. This is one that doesn't get a lot of hype. I don't think it's talked about very much. It is a 15 year old, but it's not the famous 15 year old sherried one. What we've got is a bourbon matured 15 year old. This one's called Golden and Elegant. Our label here tells us this was married in first fill bourbon casts. Uh, it's a 2017 release and it's intended for the travel retail market. So it's meant to be sold in like airports and whatnot. Although I bought mine at the shop down the road. And it's funny, that shop is stocked with literally dozens of travel retail exclusives. I have no idea why, but I mean, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, for our bottle here, this one comes in a generous one liter bottle size, which is pretty common among travel retail exclusives. And you know, a lot of people look down on travel retail exclusives, which, yeah, travel retail whiskeys are almost never craft oriented whiskeys. They're always designed to be like mass appealing, but it so happens that Bowmore never gives us craft oriented whiskeys anyway. At least we do get an age statement with this one. Um, so, you know, a travel retail, but from Bowmore, what do we have to lose? Nothing. Bowmore is a funny distillery. I see it as very much an outlier among its Isla peers. Um, it is a peated whiskey, I think around like 25 ppm, uh, but it's defined more by like these dry tobacco and leather notes as opposed to the sort of ashy, uh, medicinal, smoky flavors that you're going to get from other Isla distilleries. The Momo profile is very dominant and it's very consistent, almost to a fault, uh, to the point that pretty much every Bowmore you taste is going to have a certain sameness to it. Um, of course, they do have unique expressions with unique characteristics, but oftentimes those unique characteristics are overshadowed by that sort of monolithic Bowmore profile. As I mentioned earlier, this is a brand that almost never gives us craft presentation and obviously that's unfortunate, but despite that, I still like the Bowmore House style. I think they have some decent whiskeys out there. Uh, of course, a lot of their potential is stifled by those weak specs, but despite that, it is a brand that I come back to from time to time, admittedly with low to moderate expectations. So while they're far from my favorite Isla distillery, I have had some genuinely interesting and delicious Bowmores over the years. So why don't we find out if our 15 is among them? Why don't we hop into our review, see what this whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. As expected, we do have some pretty weak specs here. Our ABV comes in at 43%. This is going to be chill filtered and we have caramel colorant, which is par for the course. So we've got an unnatural color there, getting kind of low uh, for the bottle. Bullmore bottles are okay. I don't mind the look. Uh, they're understated. They're kind of stylish, I guess, but maybe a bit bland too. Um, decent presentation score here, maybe three out of five. Beyond that, not much info here. I think mine might've been intended for the European market. I've got Farvin Justeret Med Caramel E150A. Uh, clearly, I speak perfect German, Danish. Anyway, uh, we've got some tasting notes on the back. Really not much else to it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just another Bowmore bottle, isn't it? It's, it's fine. Let's try our nose. So we get that classic Bowmore peat leather tobacco thing going on. We've got uh, caramel, we've got honey, we have like ham and cured meats in here. Salt, toffee, uh, stroop waffles, those thin caramel waffles. We've got some oak and some oak spice. It's a classic Bowmore nose maybe a little bit drying. Now the palette. Okay. Um, honey, caramel, peat, smoke, salt. Uh, we have some drying cereal grains in here, some red licorice, some white chocolate, some lavender, and some hay. Now the finish. Okay, more lavender here, but don't worry, it doesn't get soapy like some of those old Bowmores used to way back. Uh, less of a problem with the brand these days. I'm getting um, vanilla, oats, cereal, hay, more Stroop waffles, and we're lingering on kind of like a faint cherry note. 
So I like this one. I have no problem drinking this stuff. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of Bowmores, not all, but a lot of them, suffer from that sameness. Uh, so usually, personally speaking, I don't need more than one Bowmore open at a time. I don't know if you guys have ever done a side-by-side -side with a bunch of Bowmores, but I have, and once you get a few drams deep, all you really taste is Bowmore. That Bowmore profile just kind of overwhelms everything else. So I usually just pop one at a time, and if you're going to pop one Bowmore, it might as well be this one. It is a good one. Of course, there are better options out there, but it's a classic interpretation of the Bowmore profile. It's not quite as sweet or as sherry-driven as some of their other expressions. It's more of a stripped-down, straightforward interpretation of the distillate, not much dressing on it. And it works for what it is. I do like these flavors, uh, but it doesn't do anything too unique or interesting. I think if you've had a Bowmore before and you try to imagine a basic distillate-driven 15-year-old, congratulations, you've imagined almost precisely what this whiskey tastes like. And being a predictable whiskey doesn't need to be a bad thing. I don't mind predictable whiskeys. What I do mind is forgettable whiskeys. Now, I've said this before, I care more about bad whiskeys than I do forgettable ones. At least I feel something when I drink a bad whiskey. I have an emotional response to it. Something like this, yeah, it is forgettable, uh, but it's definitely not the worst offender out there. As a Bowmore, you know, Bowmore whiskeys have such a distinctive profile that they never really come across too generic. Just generic for a Bowmore. It's still a set of flavors that you're not going to find somewhere else. Uh, we have the classic Bowmore profile here, and I do like those sort of like stroop waffles and biscuity caramels that we find in this. It's really not that bad. It's not as bad as I'm making it out to be. It's not that forgettable. But it's not outstanding. It's a simple, pleasant, classic Bowmore profile. My score for this one's going to be 83. I don't think there's enough going on with this whiskey to warrant too much higher than that. Uh, but oppositely, you know, usually when I give a score like 83, I come across a lot more disappointed. Not so much here. This is a cheap whiskey, weak specs, zero hype behind this bottle, travel retail exclusive from one of the more frowned upon distilleries on Isla. So expectations were not high going into this bottle. This offers us a good hit of Bowmore, and it paints a pretty clear picture of the kinds of flavors that we can expect from the distillery. It's smooth, it's pleasant, it's easy, and, you know, I'll be a lot harder on brands like, let's say, Aaron, when I'm dishing out scores like 83, and that's just because expectations are so much higher. But for this one, it's a low to, let's say, mid-range Bowmore. Uh, I think it's doing fine. I've enjoyed this bottle, I'll happily finish it, I will promptly forget about it afterwards, and I won't buy it again. But if someone else does buy it and offers me some, I'll happily drink it again. Uh, it's it's fine. Our value here is decent, but not exceptional. I do think there are better whiskeys out there for the money, uh, and I'd probably be a lot tougher on this bottle if it didn't come in that one liter bottle size. Uh, if this was the same price for 700 milliliters, it would be a no. Um, as it stands, yeah, a full liter, easy sipping Bowmore, affordable, age stated, that's all fine. I mean, I'm not going to buy it again, but I'm not mad at it either. This whiskey is like a Fast and Furious movie. Just kind of turn your brain off and enjoy it. Don't overthink it. I think if you're a fan of Bowmore and you're looking for an easy sipper, this will do the trick. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below. Click that little bell icon and, of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you guys. Have you tried our Bowmore 15 Golden and Elegant? What were your thoughts? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.